Although the Space Forces focus on strategic military operations that utilize space, they are never working alone. As we flow further through time, the collaboration between companies like NASA and SpaceX will be ever so important when determining not only American space superiority, but also space mindedness. Before we look at the Space Force's supporters, we need to look at how the Space Force supports itself, more specifically its organizational structure. First, we have to start with the President, obviously. As we go further down past the Secretary of Defense and into the Department of the Air Force, we now see that, similar to how the Department of the Navy is sorta of cut up into the Navy and the Marine Corps, the Department of the Air Force is doing basically the same thing. While the Chief of Staff of the Air Force is primarily in charge of the Air Force, the Chief of Space Operations is in charge of, you guessed it, the U.S. Space Force. Now a ton of people lead a ton of different things in the Space Force, so we won't be able to cover every single individual comprehensively. But essentially, similar to how the Air Force has major commands like the Air Combat Command or Air Education Training Command, the Space Force has something pretty similar. The equivalent of an Air Force Major Command in the Space Force is called a Field Command. The Space Force has three Field Commands. Currently, the Space Operations Command, with its HQ at Peterson Space Force Base, Colorado, is the Space Force's primary provider of Space Forces and capabilities to commanders, coalition partners, the Joint Force, and the whole nation. Space Systems Command over in LA, California is in charge of the development, acquisition, and fielding of lethal and resilient space capabilities for warfighters, as well as the launches, overall development, sustainment, and maintenance of all United States Space Force space systems, while also being the overseer of all science and technology activities in the Space Force. Training and Readiness Command, aka STARCOM, also headquartered at Peterson Space Force Base, Colorado, is where all the learning happens. They are responsible for the training and education of space professionals, ultimately in charge of developing leaders into space-minded officers. Unlike the Air Force, which is primarily organized into five different echelons of command, the Space Force is organized into just three. Field commands, deltas, and squadrons. We should also take note of garrisons, which are also another level of command, but not exactly. They primarily oversee support, similar to how the Air Force has wings at Air Force bases, except the Air Force has over 100 wings, while the Space Force only has three of its equivalent. So technically, the Space Force hierarchy goes with Field Command, then it goes to Deltas and Garrisons about at the same, then Squadrons and Flights. The Air Force is more of Matchcom's numbered Air Force Wing Group Squadron Flights. There's a little bit more hurdles to jump through in the Air Force than there are in the Space Force. And because there are less hurdles to jump through in the chain of command, this further emphasizes one of the Space Force's goals to be a very agile branch. Under these field commands are these domains known as Deltas. Space Delta-1 is housed under the Space Training and Readiness Field Command, as this Delta focuses on training. Under the Space Operations Command, we have Delta-2, which is focused on space domain awareness. Delta-3 is all about space electronic warfare. Delta-4 conducts strategic and theater missile warning. Delta-5, Command and Control, has the mission of executing operations command and control of space forces to achieve global objectives. Delta-6 is heavy on cyber. Delta-7 controls space force intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Delta-8 is all about position, navigation, timing, and communications. And Delta-9 is focused on orbital warfare. Space Deltas 10 to 13 continue in the Space Training and Readiness Command, while the final field command is home to two Space Launch Deltas, 30 and 45. I don't know why they just skipped a 30 and then right up to 45, but we, had, we, we do have a lot of Deltas, so I, I guess it makes sense. You gotta keep the numbers, you know. <laughs> now that we have the internals of the Space Force at least semi-figured out, let's go into other organizations that help assist the Space Force in its mission. NASA and the U.S. Space Force work closely together when it comes to planetary defense, or trips to the moon, or really anything space-related you can think of. Private American companies that have been seeing success help the U.S. actually gain a stronger grasp of the space domain. Okay, when I mean like private American companies, I'm primarily talking about SpaceX. I mean, they've launched like a ton of different GPS satellites to help replace some of our old ones up in space for the Space Force. They've won contracts from the Space Force to do a bunch of really cool things in the future. I mean, 
I could go on and on about how much SpaceX has done to improve the Space Force and its capabilities. And I mean, re reusable rockets? I mean, that's a huge money saver for America and the Space Force. All right, that's enough SpaceX for now. There's a lot of other companies that are definitely worth noting. There have been many smaller companies who have received contracts from the Space Force of over $40 million to conduct research, development, testing, and evaluation of all sorts of cool things that could assist the Space Force and the space domain in general. Some of these companies include Astrobic, Phase 4, and Cognitive Space. But also there's over 10,000 different private companies that could really be huge game changers for the Space Force and the space domain's future. It's really important to recognize these companies as well if Wall Street and other billionaires are really focused on, I don't know, space, then there's gonna be a lot of interest towards space, hence more recruitment in the Space Force. Many universities are seeing more students apply to space-related STEM degrees, and like I previously said, this only highlights the beginning of a rapid evolution towards the future of the space industry.